Number 85. Richard recorded the weight of this dog, Jackson, at different ages, as shown in the scatter plot below. Based on the line of best fit, what will Jackson's weight be after 18 months? Well, since it says based on the line of best fit, you should feel inclined to draw a line of best fit. And you definitely would want to, you definitely want a ruler when you draw a line of best fit. Um, or you can use, you know, a piece of paper as a straight edge or something, but draw it with a tool that will help you be more exact. When you draw a line of best fit, remember that it should be as close to all of the points as possible. Um, so if I draw on a line right here, I would look at this line, I want, whenever you're deciding where to placement, I would think, okay, does, is this as close to all of the points as possible, and does it follow the trend of the data? You know, I see that the points are increasing as I go over, and this line is following the trend, but I don't think it's as close to all of the points as it could be. So then maybe kind of tip your line until you get nice and lined up. Down here would be too far. Again, these points are really far away, but these are really close. You want to place your line somewhere where all of the points can be as close as possible to your line. Another good measure is to maybe that count how many points are above the line and how many points are below the line. You can remember that the line doesn't actually have to go through any of the points. It doesn't have to go through the origin, but it can. It can go through the origin and it can go through the points if the data is still all super close to it. I'm pretty content with my line right where it is. Now that I have the line, if I want to predict what the weight will be after 18 months, go over to the x-axis and find where 18 months is. 18 months would be a continuation. It'd be somewhere over here, right? Like the next block. Then take your ruler and draw, I like to draw a dashed line or a dotted line straight up from 18 until you run into your line of best fit. Once you hit your line of best fit, trace over at that point. Here's where it's intersecting. Trace over to your y-axis to see what the weight is on that level. Chasing over from this point, I feel like my weight is right around 35. So I think the closest answer would be, oh, sorry. The closest answer would be 36 pounds. C would be the best answer in this case. Number 86. The line plot below shows the number of hours each student in Miss Smith's class exercise each week. What is the median of the list of the data in the graph? So this graph is just showing all the number of hours. I would write them out because we want to find the median, we want to find the middle, which means that they need to be in order. So the nice thing is, is they are in order here, so let's just list them. There's one zero. Then there's a two, two, two. Then there's another two, two, two. Then there's two more twos. Okay, I did all the twos. There's a three. One, two, three, four. So four, four, four. And there's one, two, three, four, five, six fives. Okay, I did all the fives. There's one find the data value, and that's a seven. So I have zero, then I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, twos, one, three, three, fours. This looks good. Now to find the middle, you count in from both ends until you find the middle term. So you can cross them out as you go. I like to go back and forth until you get to the middle number. I have two numbers in the middle, so you need to find the middle of those two. In order to find the true middle, you can add the values together and divide by two, but sometimes you know what it's going to be. What's right in between three and four? Three and a half, or 3.5. Three plus four is seven. Seven divided by two is 3.5. So your median value would be three and a half hours. Problem number 87. A company made a bar graph showing the amount of sales for each month in thousands of dollars. Which is the closest to the mean amount of sales for the four-month period? Remember that mean 
is average. So what is the average number of sales for all four months? To find the average, you need to add up all the data values and divide by how many there are. So I have four months, I'll be dividing by four. You just need to find the sales for each month. The first month was about five and a half, don't forget to look at the label, five and a half thousand. So 5.5 .5 and then 5,000, really 5,500. The second month lines up with nine, but it's 9,000. So I would be adding these together. The third month, same as the first one, so 5,500. And then the last month, trace that over, 8,000 would be the last month. To find the mean, you add all four of these together and then divide by however many there are. 9,000 plus 8,000 would give me 17,000. This would give me 11,000, so I'd be left with 28,000. Now you could use your calculator to get that numerator. Then divide by four. 28 divided by four is seven. I have these zeros, so 28,000 divided by four would give me 7,000. Which is the closest to the mean amount then? Well, the mean is 7,000. 7,000 is the closest. Problem number 88. The number of CDs sold for a new band are represented by the box and whisker plot below. Which set of data below, below represents the median and the third quartile in that order? Remember that the median is going to be that middle of the box where you draw that line. So the median lines up with 70. And the third quartile, well, here's the first quartile. Here's the third quartile. So that lines up with 80. So you're looking for one that says 70 is the median, 80 is the third quartile. Your correct answer would be D. Remember, this is the minimum, this is the max, and these are the middles of each half. Correct answer then is D. Problem number 89, which scatter plot most likely has a line of best fit represented by y equals 2x plus 1? Well, I would start by thinking about what this line looks like. This line has a positive slope. So I would look at your data and see what data has a positive trend. When I look at the first data set, I can see these points, they're kind of trickling down as I move to the right. This has a negative correlation, which means it would have a negative slope. So I don't think A would have a line of best fit that's the same as that line. C, okay, these data values, they are kind of increasing. It might be C. All right, B, looking at the correlation, again, from the left to the right, I can see that these points are kind of increasing. Probably could be B or C then. And D, looking at these points as I move from the left to the right, this seems like it's kind of decreasing a little bit. This is more of a negative trend or a negative correlation. So I think we could rule out D as well. Then what I would recommend you do is actually draw in a line of best fit in both of these graphs and then go from there. Remember when you draw a line of best fit in, you need to make it as close to all of the points as possible. Um, you maybe want to try to judge by having the same number of points above or below the line. I think this one looks pretty good. It's going through some of the points. It doesn't have to do that. There's two points above it and two points below it. Let's draw in another line of best fit on C. Again, follow the trend of your data. Try to get it as close to all of the points as possible. So maybe a little bit more dragged up. We kind of have more points above it, so maybe a little bit more over here. Now we have still three points above it, but they're a little closer, and the two points below it are a little farther. I think those two lines look good. Now just determine which one would be closer to 2x plus 1. Well, the y-intercept should be around 1. And when I look at b, when I look at b, b has a y-intercept of 0. Look at the slope of b. It's, you know, not exact, but it looks like it's kind of going up 1 over 1 almost. Whereas c has a y-intercept closer to 1, and it looks like it's going more up too. It's a little bit steeper. I think C would be the best answer here 
because it's closer to the 2x plus 1. Problem number 90, getting into probability. The number cube with, a number cube with sides labeled 1 through 6 is rolled two times, and the sum of the numbers that end face up is calculated. What is the probability that the sum of the numbers is 3? Well, keep in mind that if you're adding the two dice together, we can have a bunch of different sums, but how, what would you have to roll to get a sum of 3, right? Think about rolling two die. If you had a 6 and any other number on the other die, would you get a sum of 3? No. If you had um, a 3 on the first die, what, would you, what could you get on the second die to get a sum of 3? Nothing. Because if you add anything to 3, you would already be over it. So what could you roll that would get you a sum of 3? You're rolling two number cubes. So you could roll a 1 and a 2, right? That would give you a 3. Or you could roll a 2 and then a 1. That would give you a 3. Can't roll a 1 and a 1. Can't roll a 2 and a 2. 5 and a 4. You can't roll a 6, 5, 4 at all. Or 3 at all. So this is the only way you can get a sum of 3. Your probability then is going to be two ways that this can happen out of What's the total number of possibilities you can get when you roll two die? Well, you can find the total by thinking, what are the possible outcomes on each die? You have six different sides on a die, so you can get six different numbers on the first die. You can get six different numbers on the second die, which means you have a total of 36 different outcomes when you roll two die. Your probability would be two out of 36, which reduces, divide by 2, and you'll get 1 out of 18. The probability of getting a sum of 3 would be 1 18th. Problem number 91. Bobby is taking a multiple choice history test. He has decided to randomly guess on the first two questions. On each question, there are four answer choices. What is the probability that he answers the first question correctly? and the second question correctly. So what's the probability of getting a correct and another correct? Well, what's his chance of just guessing the correct answer on the first one? There are four different outcomes, so that's your total, and only one of them are going to be correct. What's the probability of getting the second question correct? Well, it's the same thing. There's still four different answers he could choose from only one will be correct. Whenever you have an and probability, you should multiply. So you should have one-fourth times one-fourth, which gets you one-sixteenth. The probability would be C. Number 92 is just like 91. You want to know what's the probability of getting heads on a coin and the probability of pulling a green marble. Well, the possibilities on flipping a coin are heads or tails, so there's only two outcomes. How many of those outcomes are heads? One. The probability of getting a green marble, well, how many marbles are there total? There's four white, two blue, and five green. Four plus two plus five gives me 11. How many are green then? How many ways can you pull a green marble out? Well, you can pull five different greens out of the bag. Remember that and with probability means to multiply. And you multiply fractions straight across, so it would be 5 to over 22. Your probability for 92 is A.